the immediate priority is to avert the danger of war. We want any strikes uh, to be avoided uh, in the first place. Donald Trump also tempered his tone. Still, forces were set in motion last Saturday when the Syrian regime seemed to cross Trump's red line with an alleged chemical attack on a rebel stronghold. Investigators from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons arrived in Syria today on a mission to determine whether toxic gas was indeed used in Douma. But not helping things, the president's apparent addiction to Twitter. His rhetoric often flies in the face of established U.S. policy, reversals and contradictions which seem to change by the day and by the hour, much of it baffling to the rest of the world. And as Paul Hunter tells us, navigating the president's tweets, especially in this case, is proving to be a foreign policy challenge. With Russian forces stationed throughout Syria, Russia's warning to the U.S. remains. A missile strike against its ally, Syria, will be treated as a war crime. And Russia will fire back at the missiles and at wherever they're fired from. This as Donald Trump continued to consider his options. Tweeting today, an attack could be very soon or not so soon at all. Later, adding... We're looking very, very seriously, very closely at that whole situation, and uh, we'll see what happens, folks. Ever since that suspected gas attack on a rebel enclave outside Damascus last weekend, blamed on the regime of Bashar al-Assad, who denies any involvement, the expectation has been of a forceful U.S. response. A year ago, after another such gas attack, 59 cruise missiles were fired at Syrian targets. Syria demonstrated soon after there seemed to be minimal damage. So if there's a strike now, most believe it will be significantly more robust. But will a Russian counter-response signal war? We cannot exclude any possibilities, unfortunately, because we saw, we saw messages that are coming from Washington. Uh, they were very bellicose. Uh, uh, they know we are there. I hope, uh, I, I, I wish there was a dialogue at, uh, through appropriate channels on this to avert any, any, dangerous, uh, any dangerous development. All of this as Donald Trump's pick for his new Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, weighed in on war broadly during his confirmation hearings on Capitol Hill. It's the last resort. It must always be so. And I intend to work to achieve the president's policies with diplomacy, rather by sending our young men and women to war. Senators pushed Pompeo to beware what one deemed the president's worst instincts. Paul Hunter, CBC News, Washington. Now tonight, President Trump spoke with British Prime Minister Theresa May about the need for an international response. That happened just hours after Britain's war cabinet said the UK would take part in military action. And as Margaret Evans reports, the recent chemical attack on British soil is a factor in its resolve. Are you convinced of the case for military action? British cabinet ministers arriving at Downing Street. Mr. Williamson! Summoned back from spring recess to deliberate over the coming storm. But the wheels of decision making can be slow to turn. And Britain's position is a complicated one. The diplomatic crisis between Russia and Western nations, all those diplomatic expulsions, found its feet here first, with the alleged use of a nerve agent against the former Russian spy, Sergei Skripal, and his daughter, Yulia. The British Prime Minister Theresa May's assertion that Russia was likely to blame prompted a surprising unity of purpose in the West, when you consider how wary EU countries are of an unpredictable Trump presidency. Today, the head of Britain's main surveillance agency linked what he called an emboldened Russia with the turmoil in Syria. It demonstrates how reckless Russia is prepared to be, how little the Kremlin cares for the international rules-based order. But Western unity on any military intervention in Syria could be much harder to maintain. Ms. Rudd? May's cabinet agreed Britain should work towards a coordinated international response to allegations Syria has used chemical weapons. But that doesn't mean she'll get a free pass from the public or the opposition. More bombing, more killing, more war will not save life, will just take more lives. 
Syria has denied the allegations against it. And many analysts say whatever Western powers agree to do, it's unlikely to change the course of the conflict. Assad and Putin have basically won the war. And uh, the sooner it, they're allowed to end this war, the better it would be for Syria. That, of course, will depend on your point of view. Margaret Evans, CBC News, London.